Good morning and welcome to The Current. We're so glad that you're here today. Why don't you stand up with us? We're going to worship this morning and praise our Lord. Welcome to The Current. We are so glad that you're here today. Um, in just a minute, we're going to have the kids come and sing, so they're going to uh, start heading out. You can go ahead and take a moment, greet each other, say hello maybe to somebody that you haven't met, somebody that you have, and then you can go ahead and have a seat. This morning we have um, our Friendship Connection Choir, which is our uh, elementary age kids who come and meet together on Sunday evenings. And we are also um, really excited this morning because we have the kids from the Sunshine Center Preschool here singing with us. So let's give them all a big welcome. 
And as soon as they're up here, they're going to sing a song for us. A little organized chaos. To her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. All right, let's give them one more round of applause. They were so awesome. We're going to continue to worship this morning. If you want to stand up with us.
so glad that you're here today. Uh, why don't you just go ahead and have a seat? Oh, and we're going to have hosting time now. Sorry, I'm thrown off. Chuck. Morning. Uh, my name's Chuck Zarzi, and I'm happy to be here with you today at Mumsy. Uh, we are counting, we're continuing our new fall series, uh, Lean In. Pastor Brian will be up in a few minutes to uh, talk about leaning into giving. Uh, when everybody came in today, you received a program. If you'd go ahead and grab that right now, uh, you'll find your connection card in that program. It kind of looks like this. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a member or a regular tender here at the United Methodist Church, we ask that you at least put in your name and your email address in the front of the card. 
Uh, also on the front of the card, you'll see some boxes. You can go ahead and mark the box, first or second time guest, uh, regular attender or member, whichever is appropriate for you. Um, and if you are a first time guest with us today, welcome. Uh, we are happy to have you here and uh, we're, uh, glad to see you. Um, we are honored that you decided to join us. We'd love to have the opportunity to get to know you better. If you'd please uh, fill out at least your name and email and as much of other information on that card that you're comfortable sharing would be great. Uh, go ahead and hang on to these cards because you'll have an opportunity to check next steps later in the service and then drop them in the offering basket at the end of today's service. Um, we have some great holiday service opportunities coming up uh, for the church. Uh, the Thanksgiving meal is coming up and there are several ways to get involved. Uh, on Sunday, November 26th, we are, uh, we'll be hanging the greens immediately following the current uh, lunch and child care will be provided. Uh, Saturday, December 2nd uh, is the Monticello Annual Lighted Christmas Parade. Uh, Matt and Kelly Kaiser, uh, once again, will be in charge of the float. Uh, I seen uh, Kelly earlier today. She, she's around here, I believe. Um, on the back of the connection card, take a moment to check the boxes that, would, that we'd like to participate in. Um, you can check the bulletin for more details on each event. Uh, in the bulletin, you also see a prayer window. Please take a few minutes to look this over and be in prayer for these people this week. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can write them on the back of your connection card. Uh, if you don't want your prayer request on the weekly prayer email, please mark, make sure you mark confidential. Uh, let's take a moment to pray together. Please, Lord, be with us today as we hear the message. Also, please lift up the uh, people on the prayer, in the prayer window and then also any un, uh, unlisted prayers that we may have. Uh, please be with us this week and keep these in prayer. Amen. Well, at this time, we um, are going to participate in a baptism together, so we'd invite uh, Kevin and Abby to, to come forward. And Well, baptism is something that we practice in the context of public worship. You know, um, Kevin and Abby are, are bringing their, their youngest child for baptism today, and so we're going to, to share in, in that uh, moment with them, you know, as they make a profession of their faith, but also as the body of Christ, you will have an opportunity to, to make a profession of your faith and also your commitment to, to help to, uh, uh, to nurture uh, James in, in his faith walk over the, the course of the years. So um, on behalf of the whole church, I would ask you these questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives to you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. I will. You know, as they uh, make that uh, commitment of, of nurturing him and, until uh, he can accept God's grace for himself, you know, that may happen in a, in a number of different settings. There's no specific age that that will, will necessarily happen. But one of the things that we do offer in, in terms of faith progression is when... Uh, when youth reach 7th and 8th grade or older, we offer a confirmation class for them. And um, that confirmation class for this year just started the, this morning. And so that's something that in another, I don't know, 11 or 12 years, uh, James is, is going to be a part of. And his brother and sister will be a part of that uh, you know, before 11 or 12 year, years are up. But now I've got questions for, for you. Do you as Christ's body, the church, Reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life 
and include this one now before you in your care. Is there any more for you to say? No, nope, that's it. All right. Let's, um, let's pray. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon this water. We pray that uh, it would be a, a symbol and a, and a conduit for your grace in, in this day. As water is a, is a symbol of your deliverance, as it also is a, a symbol of, of your cleansing. Lord, we pray that, uh, that through the, this water, that your grace might be bestowed upon James's life and you might watch over him and guide him all of his days. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, before I, I baptize James, you know, Kate, I've got a picture up here I want you to look at. You remember that? Do you know who that is? You know, about, uh, I think a little over four years ago, you know, I baptized you. Your, your parents brought you, just as they're bringing uh, James today, and, and they were making a profession of their faith and, and a commitment to, uh, to nurture you in, in the church and, and in, in God's love. And um, Jay, you, Jay, can you look up there, Jay? Look, look up there. You recognize who that is? Yeah. You know, about a year and a half ago, Pastor Drew baptized you, and, and your parents made that same commitment, a profession of their faith, and, and they, they wanted to make that commitment to, to raise you in, in the church and, and in, in the ways of Christ. Now, before I baptize your brother, what I want to do is to invite you two uh, to uh, recall your baptism. You don't remember it. You, know, you saw the picture up there, but I want this to be a, a symbol. I want it to be a reminder of your baptism. So Kate, may this be a reminder of your baptism. Jay, may this be a reminder of your baptism. All right. I want to hand James to me here. What name is to be given this child? James Kevin Gross, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon James. May your grace flow in, in his life. May you lead him and guide him in your ways all of his days. I pray for your blessing not only upon him but upon his whole family. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. I want to give you a, a couple things this morning. One, I want to give you the baptismal certificate that uh, commemorates this day, but also want to give you a, a candle. And um, you know, just as on his birthday, you'll you'll make a birthday cake and you'll light candles and and you'll remember the uh, the day of his birth. I want to encourage you that on on this day every year that you might get out this baptismal candle and, and light it. And, and even though as parents, we're, we should always be living before our children, use every opportunity to, to teach them and nurture them about faith, on this day every year, I, I want to encourage you to, to light that candle and may, may it be an opportunity for you to talk about your own faith, to, to talk about this day and why it is that, that you brought him for, for baptism and, and your desire for him to grow up in, in the ways of the Lord. Well, as a, as a blessing upon on James today, instead of me praying a blessing, I want to invite you all to join with me in singing a blessing to him. And what we're going to do is we're going to sing, Jesus loves me, but instead of singing, Jesus loves me, we're going to sing it to James and say, Jesus loves you. So let's sing together. Jesus loves you, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, the Bible tells me so. All right, you can be 
Please be seated. Thanks, Peter. Well, this morning we're continuing our series that we're calling Lean In. And the idea of, of leaning in is, is the, the idea of, of taking a, a step of faith. You know, leaning into to God with just a little more faith than I had yesterday or last week or, or last year. You know, as we've been talking about this concept of, of leaning in, leaning into to the gospel, leaning in to, uh, to believe and, and trust and have just a little more faith, you know, leaning in to, to worship, to committing ourselves to, to participating in, in the worship life of the church and, and to engage in worship as we, as we come on, on Sunday mornings. You know, last week, Pastor Kelly talked about leaning into to service. She talked about serving not simply in our sweet spot and in those areas that we, we enjoy, but sometimes we, we need to do something just because it needs to be done. Whether we want to or not, as followers of Christ, we're called to serve. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. We, we are to serve sometimes simply because a job needs to be done. You know, this morning I'm going to talk about leaning in to giving. You know, how is it that we can lean into giving? How is it that we can have just a, a little more faith, a little more trust in God when it comes to our practice of giving? Well, today's scripture reading comes from a portion of, of teachings that, that Jesus gives in the last week of his life. It's after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, but before um, he has the Last Supper with, with his disciples. And, you know, it's probably a time when, when Jesus is feeling a pressure. You know, he knows that his days are, are numbered. He wants to make sure that he tells the, the disciples all that they need to know, and, and uh, there, there are important things that he wanna, wants to share with them. He, he talks to them about he's going to leave them, and, and he's going to, to come back and and one day, he's been teaching in the, in the temple courts, and it says that, that he left the temple courts, and he went to the Mount of Olives. And on the Mount of Olives, some or all the disciples came around him, and, and they asked Jesus. They said, tell us, when will the, these things happen? You know, when is it that, that you're going to come back to us? When, when will you return? What signs will there be to signal your coming? And what signs will there be that the end of the age is approaching? You know, it's, it's Jesus' response to the disciples' questions that the teachings and the parables that Jesus tells in Matthew chapter 24 and 25, you know, they're actually in response to, to these questions about when Christ is going to return, uh, what are going to be the signs of his return, what's going to be the, uh, the sign of the, of the end of the age. And Jesus said, first of all, about his return, he said, no one knows the, the day or hour. He said, no one knows when it is that, uh, that I'm going to, to return except the, the Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. But Jesus said that even though no one will know the day or the, or the hour, you'll know the season because he said things will be like they were in, in the times of Noah where people were going out about their business and, and having no thought of God. Jesus said no one would know the, the day or, or the hour, but, but actually... People will be unconcerned. They'll be unconcerned about his, his message. They'll, they'll be blindsided. You know, in Noah's day, you know, Noah's been out in the desert building an ark for, uh, for several years and telling them that God was going to send a flood, but, but no one gave any mind to, to what Noah was doing. And when the flood came, they were caught by surprise. Jesus said that the same thing is going to happen when, when he returns. You know, people are, are going to be going about their business, not even giving a second thought to God. And when Jesus returns, they're, they're going to, to, to be surprised by, by what's happening. In, in Matthew 25, Jesus actually tells three parables. Uh, the first parable, the, the point of that parable is that we always need to be ready for whenever it is that Jesus is going to be returning. Uh, the, the third parable that he tells is, is a parable that, that he says that we're we need to be caring for the least of these. And, and when he returns, you know, if we have been caring for the least of these, if we have been caring for those in need, then Jesus is going to, to say, you know, it's as if we, we have cared for him. But he said, if you don't care for those who are in need, 
And it's as if um, you, you don't even know me. And, and he said, you know, I will, will not claim knowing you if you've not cared for others in, in this world. I want us to look in particular at the second parable that, that Jesus recorded in Matthew 25. It's often referred to as the parable of, of the talents. Again, Christ's return will be like a man going on a journey who, who calls to his servants and entrusts his property to them. Uh, to one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, to another one talent, and each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Uh, the man going on, on the journey is, is Jesus. And he entrusts his property. He entrusts the message of the gospel. He entrusts his witness in, in this world to you and I. He entrusts it to, to his servants to, to carry on the, the message. You know, notice in, in the parable, it, it actually says that, that he gave three of his servants a, a sum of money. That, that sum of money was, was called a, a, a talent. Now, the servants could have had the, the attitude that, um, that the cat's away, the mice will play, the, the master's gone, so I can do whatever I want. Um, actually, that's the way a lot of people live, live their life. I don't see uh, Jesus walking this earth, therefore, I'll live however I want, and it really doesn't matter. But um, as Jesus has entrusted them with these resources, as he's entrusted them with the, these talents, he you know, Jesus makes an assumption that these servants are going to do with what he are going to do what he wants them to with the resources that he gives them. You know, it's an issue that as as Jesus is um, is entrusting this in, into to their care. I want you to notice something in, in verse fifteen. It says that the master distributed his wealth. He distributed his responsibility to his servants according to their ability. He didn't give everyone the same responsibility. He didn't give everyone the, the same amount of money, but he entrusted something to each of them according to their abilities. You know, God treats each of us fairly, you know, but he doesn't necessarily treat us uh, identically. He doesn't necessarily treat us all in the same way he treats us fairly and in, in the way that is best for us. God treats us differently according to our abilities, the very abilities that he has entrusted us with from, from the beginning. That doesn't mean that, that those who are entrusted with less are any less accountable for what God has given to them. Whether God has given you a little or whether God has given you, you much, you, know, you are to be a faithful steward of what he's entrusted into your care. You know, this parable refers to a, a talent, and uh, a, a talent in that day is, is, a, is an amount of, of money. But this talent uh, that is entrusted uh, to, to the servants could just as easily be referred to as, as property or possessions. It, it could be abilities. It, it can be time and, and, and talents. Uh, and the issue is, that what God gives us, the resources that God gives us, he wants us to use in ways that honor him, that are in ways of, of being good stewards of the responsibilities that he's given to us. Now, some of those responsibilities that God, God has given to us is taking care of our family. So being good stewards of caring for, for our families is, is one way that we're honoring God. But God wants us to, to use our resources, our abilities, our talents. He wants us to, to use them even beyond our household. Our household is just one area of, of responsibility. You know, the, the biblical understanding of, of stewardship is that all that you and I possess is given to us as a gift from God. And so it's not an issue that we're only responsible for being a good steward of, of some of what God has entrusted us with. We don't have to be good stewards of some of the opportunities that, that God entrusts to us, but rather because all that we have comes as a gift from God, we need to honor God in using all that we have, our, our money, our possessions, our time, our talents, in ways that, that are, are honoring to him. Uh, the master gave one servant five talents. He gave a second servant two talents, and he gave a third servant one talent. It says, the man that received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. 
Also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The, the man who had received five talents returned the five talents along with the five talents he had earned. The master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. The man with two talents came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge with many things. But the man that received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown and, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out and, and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I did not sow and gathered where I had not scattered seed? Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. You know, many people believe Jesus' return is imminent. You know, I am one of those who, who believe that, uh, yes, someday Jesus is, is going to return. But the point that Jesus is trying to make in, in these two chapters is not emphasizing the, the fact that he's going to return, but what he's trying to emphasize is that when he returns, he wants to find us living as we're supposed to be living. He wants to, to find us prepared to receive him. He wants us to, to find us being the, his hands and feet in the world, uh, caring for the least of these. He wants us to be using the, the talents, the property, the, the resources, the time and talent that he's given us. He wants us to be using them in such a way that is honoring to him. You know, living by faith when it, when it comes to giving is not an issue of being a, a Monday morning quarterback. You know, the, the first two servants, the one that received the five talents and two talents, they went right out and tried to, to be faithful with what the master had entrusted into their care. But the, the one who had received one talent, you know, he was an issue that he didn't know what to do, so he did nothing. He did nothing to, to try and, and utilize what the master had given him. You know, I, I compare that to, to Monday morning quarterbacking because so many people live their faith that way. You know, they, they want to, after everything's said and done, then they want to say, well, this is what you should have done. Those Monday morning quarterbacks that second-guess the decisions that the coach has made, and they know perfectly, well, if you had only done this, the outcome would have been different. Well, if you're so smart on Monday morning, why aren't you coaching a team on Sunday afternoon? You know, it, it's an issue that those Monday morning quarterbacks are always telling you what you should have done, but they can never make a decision in the moment. They're always making that judgment after the fact. Um, you know, when, uh, when hurricanes hit, there are people that are always criticizing the, the government officials that uh, say, well, why didn't you clear people out of this town because they were hit badly? Or, or why is it that you made people leave this community and, and the, the storm wasn't nearly as bad there? They're, they're always second guessing after the fact. Well, leaning into faith is not a reaction. But leaning into faith is something that we must do before we're certain of the outcome. Leaning into to faith means that, that we must do something before we can be sure of the outcome. And the, the servant with two talents and five talents, they were doing something to honor their, their master or what he had entrusted with them. Uh, the one was, was afraid to do anything because he couldn't be certain of the outcome. If leaning into faith is something that we must do before we can be certain of the outcome, then what does it mean for us to lean into faith when it comes to, to giving? Well, there's a principle throughout Scripture that's called uh, first fruits giving. And in first fruits giving, it, it means that, that we set aside a portion for God from the beginning, what we start with, rather than giving to God from what we have left over. You know, the idea is that when we receive our, our paycheck, when, when we receive 
income. It's an issue that in the very beginning, we set a portion of that aside for God rather than saying, oh, well, let me pay all my bills and, and see if I have anything left. You know, so often, if we, if we give to God out of what we have left, we have little or nothing left in the end. You know, God wants us, to be, wants us to take care of our family. God wants us to, to care for our bills. But he also wants to, us to be faithful stewards. And, a, and one of the biblical principles about being a faithful steward is that idea of first fruits giving. You know, the Bible also teaches that, um, that to give a percentage to, to God. You know, in, in the Old Testament, it talks about giving God a tithe. A tithe is, is 10%. Now, the, the concept of a tithe is something that's only talked about in the, the Old Testament. And so there are some people that will say, well, you know, a, a tithe isn't a New Testament concept. You know, I, I live as a New Testament Christian, and so a, a tithe really doesn't apply to me. God doesn't expect us to, to give a tithe anymore. Well, you know, the percentage that you give, I, I think, is a something between you and God. But let me challenge you in, in this way. You know, those who say that uh, when it comes to, to giving, God has, has lowered the standard. I want you to think about the difference between the, the Old and the New Testament. In the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus said to, to those that he was teaching, uh, he said that um, you, you've heard it said that, uh, that you should not murder. But he said, I tell you, you shouldn't even be angry with a brother or sister. Jesus said, you've heard it said that you shouldn't commit adultery. But I tell you, you shouldn't even look on another person with, with lust in your eye. Jesus said, you, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But, but I say to you that, um, that if, uh, someone, if your enemy strikes you on the left cheek, you, you should turn the, the other cheek to him. You know, it seems that Jesus isn't lowering the standard of how we should live, but actually his ethical standard he, he's raising. So, so when it comes to a, a tithe, if, if Jesus, if the Old Testament talked about a tithe and Jesus is always raising the standard, why would he say, oh, now a, a tithe no longer applies? You know, the, the issue of tithe is not really my, my, my challenge today. My, my challenge, though, to you is to consider what portion, what percent might you give in the coming year? What does leaning in to giving mean for you? What does it mean to trust God a little bit more with your giving next year than you're giving this year? If you're giving 1% now, what would it mean to, to give 2%? If you're giving 5%, what would it mean to, to give 6%? Yo, how is it that you can lean in to giving, that you're trusting God just a little bit more next year then you're trusting him now. You know, this morning I, I want to give you a, a couple challenges. And, and one of the, those challenges is to, uh, to, to make a commitment to give to God from your first fruits, to give to God from what you start with. Now, um, you know, it might be easy to say that to to, uh, to give to God first means that, that that's the first check that you write every week. Well, I don't write too many checks anymore. Um, my, my grandparents, I remember whenever they cashed grandpa's paycheck, they always put their tithe in a jar above the refrigerator, and every Sunday morning, grandpa would go and, and get that tithe, and he would take it to church. That was the way they handled their first fruits. That's how they gave to God from what they started with. You know, for me, even though I don't write a check very often, it's an issue that whenever I get a, a paycheck, I always set aside the, the first fruits. I always set aside what it is that I'm going to, to give to, to God so that whenever I do give, it, it's there and, and ready to, to, to be given. You know, you know, I give through ACH. You know, it's a decision that I made last January of what I was going to give each month to, to the church. You know, what I was going to give each, each month to, uh, to, to God's work through the ministry of the church. And so that's, that's the way that I handle my first fruits is, is making that decision up front of, of what I'm going to do. And so I want to encourage you to, to think about how you might give from your first fruits, not from what you have left. 
The second thing that I want to challenge you about is, is to consider a percentage. What percentage might you set as a goal to give in, in the next year? You know, if, um, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. So why not set a goal of what, what's that percentage that you're going to seek to give next year? You know, if your income gives, goes up, you give more because you've determined a percentage. Your income goes down, you give less because you've, you've determined a, a percentage. But you know, I think when it comes to giving, those two concepts are very, very important. One, that we give from our first fruits. We give from what we start with. And secondly, setting a, a goal, setting a, a percentage that begins our, our target that we're going to aim at in, in the coming year. In Matthew chapter 24 and 25, there are 37 verses that contain prophetic utterances about Christ's return in, in, in times. But there are 55 verses in those two chapters that give us instructions of how it is that we should live until he comes. It's not important for us to understand the prophetic timetable of knowing when it is that Jesus is going to return. But the important thing is that whenever it happens, he finds us living as we're supposed to live that we're ready for him, that we're being faithful and caring for the least of these, that we're being faithful stewards of, of what it is that he has entrusted into our care. One of those areas that he calls us to live faithfully in is the area of giving. So let me encourage you to, to lean into giving. Lean into giving by, by giving from your first fruits. Lean into giving by, by giving a, a percentage that you believe God is, is, is leading and, and challenging you to, to give. Jesus is going to, to come again. And when he comes, will he find us living as he's called us to live? You know, this morning as we, as we come to our, our next steps, our, um, our memory verse comes from, from Luke chapter 12, verse 48. It says, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. God is blessing each of us in so many ways. And as God blesses us, he expects us to be a conduit through which that blessing flows from our life into the life of another person. And so I would encourage you as you memorize that verse this week for it to be a reminder that, uh, that the more God gives to us, uh, the more he expects, the, the more he, he demands, he, he desires for us to be faithful stewards of what he's entrusted into our care. You know, in the way of a, a next step, you know, I want to encourage you to, to think about that, that idea of, um, of giving of first fruits and, and, uh, and, and percentage giving. You know, if, if you're a, a member of the, the church, if, if this uh, church is a place that you call your church home, you know, giving to the life and ministry of the church is one of the things that God calls you to do. And so I would encourage you to, to take this lean into giving card this week and, and prayerfully consider what it is that God might have you give in, in the next year. You know, as you set goals in your personal giving, that will also help the, the church in, in setting some, some goals as well. You know, for those that are part of the congregation, we'll challenge you to, to consider you know, what you might give to the general budget next year that supports the, uh, the ministries and, and the, the staff and turning the lights on and all the, the things that are, are related to, to caring for the ministries of the church but also would, would invite you to consider if, if you're able to, to take a piece of the mortgage. You know, as, um, as we're, we're paying the, the debt on this building, you know, our, um, our monthly payment is $8,500. And so what we're looking for is people that are willing to take a, a piece of that debt, maybe on a weekly, monthly, or, or on an annual basis. And uh, you know, even though our payment's $8,500 a, a month, we would like to, to get twelve or 13000 a month so that we can accelerate that payment and, and get it to, to be paid off more quickly. You know, if you're not a part of the church, let me still encourage you to consider how much you're going to give to charity. You know, if you're not a part of this church, you don't need to, to give to, to this church, but, but giving is something that, that is good for us. 
It does something for us on, on the, the inside as well as making a positive difference in, in the lives of others. So even if you're not thinking about what it is that you're going to, to give to, to the church in, in the next year, you know, I would challenge you to, to think about setting some goals of how are you going to give charitably to make a difference in other people's lives. And the second next step that I want to give you the, this morning is that, um, that you will use your time and your talents, that you will use your, your money, your resources, your possessions, the, the opportunities that, that God gives you, that you'll use your, your abilities uh, in order to make a difference in another person's life this week. Let's pray together. Lord, may you help each of us to trust you just a little bit more in the area of giving. May you help us to, to lean into giving that, that we might be more faithful in the coming week, in the coming month, in, in the coming year than, than we have been in, in the past. Lord, I pray that, uh, that as we, we trust you, that we might trust you with, with our first fruits, that we might come to you with, with an offering from the start, rather than simply bringing to you our, our leftovers. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, if, uh, if you're a first-time guest with us th this morning, I want to say welcome. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, on, on your way out, I hope you'll start, stop by the starting point as uh, we've got a, a special gift that we want to give you there. Would encourage everyone to take your your connection card and to uh, to fill that out. And as the offering baskets are are passed in just a few moments, would invite you to uh, to drop those those connection cards in the the offering baskets as, as they go by. You know, as you um, put tithes and offerings in the in the offering baskets, those go to support the the life and, and ministry of of the this congregation. Also, as uh, you put that connection card in, it's a way that you're offering yourself to God, not only in this hour of worship, but as his servant in, in the, this coming week. You know, and I would encourage you, a, as you give, to give of your time, your talent, your prayers, your, your, your service, because that's how God calls us to live as we seek to be his followers. Let's pray together. Lord, as we give of our tithes and our offerings, may you bless what we give, in order that it makes a, a difference for your kingdom uh, through the life and ministries of, of this church. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. An event for everyone. Please join us from 5 to 6.30 tonight at, uh, in Connection Court. Uh, that's right here. Um, 6.48, we'll meet at the normal time uh, for their group. Uh, our November Capital Campaign fundraisers gift cards. Uh, get your orders in by tomorrow in the office. You can also check out uh, all we have to offer in the lobby out there. Uh, next Sunday is I Am Third. Uh, this month, we'll be focused on local nursing homes. Uh, we want to provide the residents of small games, puzzles, books, Kleenex, and other items. Uh, you can check the bulletin for the list of items that are needed. Uh, also check the bulletin for other upcoming uh, events and announcements. It's been a great day. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday at the Classic at 930 or right back here at the Current as we continue the series uh, Lean In.
Break every chain and set me free. Be the air that I breathe. I give you all control. Anchor down my soul. Let's stand up and continue to worship this morning.